Hey guys, it's MJ. It is truly hope y'all are having an amazing day so far. Um, remember the joy of the Lord is our strength and the rapture is imminent. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, regardless of what's going on. I've had a lot going on in my own personal life um, with my prodigal, and I know y'all have prodigals, and um, please know that we are praying for you and your prodigal and your family, your extended family. Um, we are in some crazy, crazy times right now, guys. I mean, if the enemy can come at us with such spiritual warfare, and we are walking close with the Lord. Imagine the warfare that's coming against our prodigals. And prodigals are saved because we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But remember, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And the Bible is the last place that a prodigal is going to look for information. And the enemy, Satan is a liar. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. And um, when prodigals are out there running, and I was one myself for 11 years. As you all know, my testimony is the first video on this channel. Um, he comes at you pretty good. And uh, so please pray for my daughter, Shayla, my prodigal. Um, and I appreciate y'all's prayers. Um, I don't want to go into any detail, but yeah, just keep her in your prayers. And um, she would appreciate that also. <sighs> just know, guys, when I say imminent, we are watching and waiting for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the twinkling of an eye, the rapture is going to happen. Everything that needs to happen has happened. I mean, the earth is groaning. These are labor pains. This is not climate change. This is not, there is no election that is going to, no man that is going to save us from what this world has become. This world is insane. The Bible says that in the end days, they will be calling evil good and good evil. We have arrived. The Bible says that as in the days of Noah, that's when Jesus Christ is going to come and rapture his bride. We are in the days of Noah, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God always warns before destruction. And you know, the seven year tribulation is not for us. I say this in every video. It is not for us. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. Tootsie, no, be nice. Don't bark. Somebody might be walking behind there, uh, walking their dog or something. Be nice. Be nice, girl. Tootsie, be nice. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel. Um, that is not us, the church. When Jesus Christ said, it is finished on that cross, our sins, past, present, and future, were cleansed by the power of that blood. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world. And we're not appointed to that wrath that's about to happen imminently. The rapture will happen before the seven-year tribulation. I'm going to share the gospel before I share anything else. Um, because if you're not born again, it is, it is so very late in the hour. The dispensation of grace is getting ready to close. This door is getting ready to close, beloved. And you don't want to be here in the seven-year tribulation. Look at what's happening right now in Israel. Israel is God's prophetic time clock. And what's happening in Israel is an indication of what's to come. Ezekiel 38 and 39. Okay, and we're, they're revving up. It's, it's a revving up what's happening. And we were going to be caught up prior to that. So, you know, the Bible says, I'm going to share the gospel first before I share anything else. Um, as I said, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried and on the third day rose again. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. God didn't make this process hard to be born again. Uh, and Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father and is imminently 
coming back to rapture his bride. God didn't make it hard. The church religion makes it hard. They give you all these loopholes and all these things you have to jump through. Um, the enemy makes it hard. Our flesh makes it hard. God did not make this hard. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would simply believe would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. You know, we are already condemned as we enter into this world. We are entering into this condition called sin. We are born or conceived in this condition called sin. For this reason, we must be born again. Because the wages of our sin is death. But the gift, there's that word gift again. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, so how do we get there? We simply admit, acknowledge, accept the fact that yes, I am a sinner in need of the Savior and there is clearly only one and that is Jesus Christ, the only name under heaven that anyone can be saved. So we accept that, admit, I can't get myself to heaven. There are none good. There is no not one good. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we can't work our way into heaven. Um, there's works don't get us into heaven. Works don't get us saved and works don't maintain our salvation. A lot of people think once they get saved, it's like, okay, I'll take it from here, Lord. And um, I got to maintain my salvation. No, that is not, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Once we are saved, that is our spiritual birthday. We are eternally secure in Christ because of what he did, not because of what we did or didn't do. Okay, and he who began this good work in you shall perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Once again, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So if you're a prodigal out there and you know that you're saved or you got saved, you don't get born again, 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 and again, and again. You don't keep getting born again. Run back to Jesus Christ. Don't walk. Run back to Jesus Christ because he has his arms stretched open wide for you right now. So... Admit, accept, yes, I am a sinner in need of the Savior. I know that I can't save myself. I know that my works will not save me. So many people think that their works um, or their goodness upon this earth is going to get them into heaven. If you ask the majority of people, uh, you think you're going to go to heaven? Uh, yeah, I've done, I'm a good person. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So once we accept, admit, you know, yes. I'm a sinner in need of the Savior. Then B, be, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your own personal sins and the forgiveness of your own personal sins. And C, call upon his name. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be saved if you complete a certain program or not might be saved if, you know, you jump through certain hoops or, or join a church. Um, we become the church, members of the body of Christ, the moment, the nanosecond, we say I do to Jesus Christ and the gospel and believing that in our heart. So I would do that today, friend. I would not wait. I would not wait another second because, as I said, the rapture of the church is imminent. Um, everything that is going on today is just labor pains intensifying. And we know that, having had three children myself, labor pains do not reverse. They only intensify in frequency and intensity. They do not stand still. When that baby's coming, those contractions increase. And we have seen since the pandemic, only an increasing earthquakes, hurricanes, uh, lawlessness. Everything that is going on right now is a direct indication that our Savior is coming to take us home. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And we're about to see that place. And no eye has seen, no ear has heard, 
nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. And you know, as a nurse, um, I've been with hospice patients and we call them imminent. You know, we say this patient is imminent, meaning that their death is imminent, pending. And there's certain telltale signs when a patient's death is imminent, they're imminent. Um, you know, you call the family and, you know, um, you wrap up things uh, that you need to wrap up last minute things because there's an imminency. There is such an imminency right now, guys, that is beyond words. I cannot, I mean, the spiritual warfare is so off the charts right now. And we have to be prayed up and in the word and the word in us and believing with all of our heart. You know what? Be still and know that he's God. God's got this. He hasn't dropped the ball. Whatever's going on in your life. And usually those of us who are attempting to walk close with the Lord and we are walking close with the Lord, there's all hell breaking loose right now. You know why? Because the enemy knows how very short his time is. And he knows us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strengths. He's watched us all of our life. But guess what? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Greater is the army that is with us than the army that is against us. We have no need to fear. I fear no man. I fear no woman. I fear nobody. I have no anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. And and that's easy to say, um, you know, when everything's going well. But when things like things that happen in with my prodigal, I don't want to go into details. Um, the anxiety rises up, doesn't it? I say, look, Lord, well, what did you let this happen for? You know, and the enemy, he brings all this stuff at you. Oh, if God really loved you. Oh, if your prayers were really working here. What's up with this? You know, if God really cared. If God really cared. Whatever your particular situation is. I'm going to say my prodigal, okay? It could be anything situation. It could be finances. It could be anything. But right now, my particular situation is my prodigal situation, okay? And we all have something going on, don't we? Um... And the enemy, he comes at us sideways. Oh, God. Yeah. If he really cared, he would have done something about this. If God really were answering all these prayers that you've been praying, he would have done something about this. We have got to remember that the enemy is not only the accuser of the brethren, but he is also the accuser of God. He accuses God of unfaithfulness. He accuses God of dropping the ball, of not being loyal, of being unfaithful, of not being a true friend in time of need, of not answering our prayers. We need to 100% know the character of our God. We need to know he is mighty to save. He is mighty to deliver. He is mighty to heal. And in the twinkling of his eye, he can reverse what the enemy has taken a lifetime to do because he did it in my own life. In the twinkling of an eye, everything that the enemy meant for harm in my life, God turned to good. He helped me to understand his love. He helped me to understand that he was real, that his love was real, that he had a plan for my life. And that happened in the twinkling of an eye. It didn't take me a long time to understand that. It happened in the twinkling of an eye, a suddenly moment. That happened for me many years ago and my perception totally changed. And that can happen for our prodigals, that can happen for a situation, Whatever your situation is, fill in your own blank, whatever that situation is, because the enemy comes at us all kind of ways. 
And when we start um, agreeing with him, like, yeah, if God really cared. Yeah, if God really did answer prayers, all these prayers that I've been praying, there would have been an answer by now. Replace that word if with these three words. It is finished. The last three words that Jesus Christ said on that cross. It is finished. Whatever it is. God's got it worked out. Our salvation is finished. It is finished. Our sins past, present, and future were cleansed by the power of that blood on that cross. It is finished. We are sanctified, justified, and glorified. And although the glorification of our body has not yet happened, it is about to happen in the twinkling of an eye. And who's ready for that glorified body? I am ready. I mean, every day I get a pain somewhere new. Um, and I know y'all can identify we're gonna, our future is so very blessed, guys. We need to keep that in mind, that our present circumstances, the suffering that we're experiencing here on this earth, the glory that awaits us far surpasses anything that we are experiencing here on this earth. So do not rob yourself of the joy of the Lord here on this earth. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. And although he cannot have our salvation, he can't touch it. He can certainly try to hijack our identity. He can certainly try to take our peace and our joy if we allow him to. Praise let praise become a natural way of life. You know, we get stuck in our own heads, don't we? We need to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And when we find ourselves ruminating on these thoughts, you know, God doesn't really care. And sometimes it's subconscious. We don't even know we're doing it. We just find ourselves getting more and more depressed. Um, because we're feeding ourselves garbage or we're agreeing with the enemy's snare. And that's exactly what it is. It's meant to trip us up. It's meant to get us stay, to stay right there so that we don't grow, so that we don't draw near to God. We just wanna stay right there. Don't get stuck. And I'm speaking to myself as well as to each and every one of you. Don't get stuck. God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we are down, we're discouraged, we're depressed, and we're feeling low. And, and for good reason, oftentimes, you know, people have accidents, people have, you know, circumstances come our way. Um, fill in the blank. Our natural response and I'm not saying don't grieve. It's healthy, very healthy to cry. Um, but don't stay there. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we need our strength to go on. Jesus said, my peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you, not as this world gives you. Are you experiencing that peace that passes all understanding? I mean, yesterday... That piece was like uh, elusive to me because of what's going on. Like I said, I don't want to go into details. But I had to fight to get it back because my natural incl inclination is to, you know, is to fight in the flesh and, and you know, go all ballistic on something when things are unfair or when things come against my kids or when things come against me, you know, um, especially when somebody is unfair. 
but know that we don't fight in the flesh. This is spiritual warfare. We are not fighting flesh and blood. We are fighting principalities and powers. We fight in the spirit, guys. This is a spiritual war. But the enemy wins whenever he gets us to fight in the flesh. He knows our triggers. Oh, he certainly knows mine. He knows our triggers. Rejection. Uh, you know, different triggers for different people. We've all grown up differently. And yes, we are new creations in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yes, that is true. But we still live in the same soul. And we still have some triggers that left unresolved will trigger us. That's why sanctification is a daily process. That's why I advocate for journaling. Journaling, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us. He's in us, of course, but alongside of us, teaches us, counsels us. Um, he's our best friend, the lover of our soul. He shows us things that we would have never known ourselves. Why we acted that way. Why we, why we have that reaction. When you have a certain reaction to something, write it down. Ask the Lord, let the Lord um, be a part of that. And the Holy Spirit will show you. It's the truth that sets us free. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We know that no man comes to the Father except through him. But the truth continuously sets us free, doesn't it? Because the flesh lies. The flesh, apart from God, is hopeless. But he gives us hope. He gives us freedom. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Don't get stuck, whatever it is. And I'm speaking to myself as well as to you. Our natural inclination is, no, I'm not gonna read the word today, I'm mad. Or, and you won't consciously say that, but subconsciously it's like, you know what, I'm mad at God. He could have done something about this. And you know what? God is always doing something about everything. We know that all things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That's my favorite scripture. But sometimes it's like he's not fast enough for us, right? It's sometimes he's not quick enough or he's not doing it according to schedule. Like right now would be a great time for the rapture, right? I mean, to us, but that person that'll be saved in a minute, person that's gonna get born again in a minute, and all the people that are gonna get saved again if that trumpet doesn't sound within a minute, oh, they're ever so grateful that that minute was left for them because God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. And repentance in the Greek is simply metanoia, to change your mind. God himself repented, and we know that God didn't do anything wrong. Change your mind from whatever you're currently believing, Allah, you're believing in Allah, Muhammad, uh, the prayers of your ancestors are not gonna get you saved. We have to have a personal relationship with God ourselves, and as I said, you know, this is a spiritual war. We don't fight this in the flesh, guys. And when the enemy can engage us in, in this kind of, I'm just gonna say, mental insanity in our own head, tennis, you know, going back and forth on a thought or whatever. We can't change yesterday. None of us can. So I always tell people, don't should on yourself. Don't shoulda, woulda, coulda. We can't change anything in the past. We can only change 
by the power of the Holy Spirit and the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we're walking in the Holy Spirit. We can't change the past, so don't dwell on those things in the past. I should have said this, I should have done this, I should have done this. I, that is the enemy ruminating on a thought or a group of thoughts to keep our mind occupied. Bring every thought captive when you find yourself doing that. I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody, but I'm speaking to myself about this because, and be anxious for nothing because anxiety in our heart, it just draws us further away from the Lord. And you know, there's 365 verses in the Bible that tell us, do not worry, do not fear, don't be anxious because God's got this covered. Whatever this is, fill in your own blank. But remember, this is a spiritual war. We're not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So we need to put on the full armor of God. that we may be able to stand in the evil day. And this is evil. This day that we're in is so very evil. And we, we I don't see us being here much longer, guys. I mean, this election nonsense and everything that's going on, I'm not political, I'm not a political person. Um, so I don't go, but every, all of the nonsense, all of the polluted puppetry, I call it, because it's like a puppet show, isn't it? It's just the back and forth, uh, hatred and all of the, it's just pure insanity, evil calling good evil and good calling evil, good, good they say that in the end times, good will be called evil and evil will be called good. And that's happening right now. And it just will increase. There is no more make America great again. Understand that, that this is coming to a crescendo. And that is the rapture. That is the rapture of the church. So we're going to a wedding. Get excited. Whatever's happening in your day-to-day -day life, whatever's happening right now, give it to Jesus. Lord, I give this to you. I trust you with this. You know, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm not going to allow it to rob me of my peace and my joy. Journal. Okay, I say the same thing to myself as I say to you. Journal. Get alone with God. Be still and know that he's God because there's so much chaos in this world today. So much chaos, everything coming at us, every opinions, you know, my mother used to say, opinions are like, well, opinions are like armpits. Everyone has one and she didn't say that, but she didn't say armpits. She said something else, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, and they all stink. Everybody has their own opinion. What is the most important thing is what the word of God tells us. What does God say about this? What does the word of God say about this? We have to know what the word of God says. And we say, we, we, God doesn't speak to me. Well, we have to open up the word. And let the word open us up. Okay. I just wanted to jump on here and share that. Thanks for letting me just vent. But I love you guys. Know that we are praying for you and yours. And especially your prodigal. Um, we are in some of those very perilous, perilous times. That the Bible talks about. So don't compromise. Stay focused on Jesus. Keep your eyes to the sky because our savior is coming to rapture us we're going to a wedding don't compromise this is from my poetic justice my name is compromise i am the enemy of your faith i lead you into sin and i beg you to simply taste 
tiny bit won't hurt you. My intentions are never morally wrong. Everyone calls upon me if they truly want to belong. Soon you'll lose God's direction. You'll doubt you'd ever even heard his call. And I, the enemy of your faith, will assure you that God never really cared at all. Second Timothy 4.18, yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To God be the glory forever and ever. I'm going to share one more, then I'm going to let you guys go. Know that we're here to plant seeds, seeds that God will use during the tribulation because the greatest harvest of all time ever in the history of mankind will be during the tribulation. Remember, the tribulation is not for us. Any saint that is spoken of after Revelation chapter 4 are the tribulation saints. Those are the saints that come to Christ after the rapture of the church. That is not us. That is not the church. The church is not mentioned until we come back with Christ at Revelation chapter 19. So understand, we are not here for all of the horrific, horrific events that are to take place after Revelation chapter 4. So continue to plant those seeds. Continue to share the gospel. However God has equipped you to share the gospel. But this is called silent scream. And this is like for someone who is not saved. No, they might appear to be very, very confident. And they might appear to have it all together. But if they're not saved, if they're not born again, they don't have anything, guys. They don't have anything. Welcome to my world. Can you hear my soul screaming? I know I appear to be laughing. Have I fooled you into believing? Let's walk me on the picket fence painted so pretty and white. Have you purposely overlooked the fact that my house doesn't have a light? Yes, as you admire my walls of marble and my floors of costly gold, I am dying to hear the truth that you Christians alone hold. I have welcomed you into my home. Can you hear what I'm not saying? For years, my, ha my hate has kept people away when I criticize your preaching and praying. Please don't let me fool you with my wealth or intellect. I'm on my road to hell, right along with some of this world's best. If somehow you've gained act access into my world of selfish ambition, Perhaps you are the king's ambassador, equipped for this difficult mission. Don't gaze at me with envy, for you have so much more than I. <laughs> the brilliance of that light in your house truly makes me want to cry. I try not to intimidate you with my arrogance and hate, but Satan uses it as a tool to keep you weak Christians away. Come a little closer. Can you hear my heart crying? For years, I have been tied up and bound to the accuser's constant lying. I guess you haven't seen my dungeon or the skeletons in my closet. I really have deceived you, and I'm disappointed that you bought it. If you look into my eyes, the windows of my soul, you'll see a desperate spirit crying out to be made whole. You see an unlit candle on the table beside my grave that only the Son of God can light, resurrect, and save. Please don't let me fool you. I'm literally dying to find my way. I need you like a blind man in darkness desperately needs the light of day. Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. And either our spirit is lit or it's not. Either we're born again or we're not. Either we're lost or we're saved. Those are the only two categories that there are. Saved or lost. And that's how we need to see people. I love you guys. Um, till next time, keep looking up. Knowing, we know that we know that we know that our redemption draws nigh. The rapture is imminent. God bless you guys.